Today's video will cover a full guide on financial topics in the Philippines and here are different topics that we will be speaking about today. Spending, expenses and banking in the Philippines. If you are planning to live and retire in the Philippines, you're most likely wondering, how can I get more for my money? Shop online? Maybe. Buy in bulk? Maybe. Sell your burps in exchange for a discount? Maybe. But what happens is that many expats fall into the trap of going to the Philippines withdrawing money and having to pay high exchange rates and bank fees. Before heading to the Philippines, it's best to get yourself a WISE account. WISE offers a borderless bank account for expats. I've added the link below, but even if you don't use the link, please look at getting a WISE account or something very similar as it's essential if you plan to live in Asia long term. However, in time, it is a good idea to get set up with a local bank account. The easiest bank for expats tend to be BDO, Security Bank and Metro Bank. BDO and Metro Bank wouldn't accept me until I took a Filipino friend with me, but Security Bank was fairly straightforward. But what you'll find is that the rules for opening a bank account in the Philippines is very different in each branch and location. Some banks in the more remote areas rarely open bank accounts for foreigners, so it is possible to find a bank teller who is not completely familiar with the rules. It's always best to speak to management and bring a Filipino friend or a partner with you. In addition, it is possible for expats to get a credit card or a loan and we'll be speaking about this later, but in most cases there must be additional details and sometimes a guarantor or collateral. After speaking to a bank manager at BDO, I was informed that the best thing that expats can do is to build a relationship with the bank. Some of the financial planners recommend that expats save a portion of their income or retirement income each month if possible. Mayor Bank currently offers the best saving interest rate in the Philippines at 6%. So what you'll find in the Philippines is that whatever you do, long-term agreements almost always work out the cheapest option. Business owners love to lock in customers, so it tends to be that the longer the contract, the cheaper the rate. Expat tax in the Philippines. The rules on tax in the Philippines will depend on several factors. Some countries require tax to be paid even if you are living in the Philippines full-time. It's also important to change your residency to avoid paying any additional tax. In the US, for example, US citizens can apply for special tax benefits if abroad. Other countries have similar rules. US and the UK also have tax treaties to avoid double taxation. Expat residents are taxed on all of their income, regardless of if this was in the Philippines or abroad. Non-residents in the Philippines are only taxed on income earned within the Philippines. So in other words, if you are a non-resident, you won't pay tax in the Philippines for income that you've earned in other countries. Last will and testament in the Philippines. After spending a few hours on Facebook or TikTok, the prospect of death doesn't seem so bad, but for most of us, it's something that we don't have on our to-do list. Nevertheless, if you have property, savings or the like, creating a will is a smart idea. A few months ago, I spoke to a lawyer about this, and he informed me that most expats make a will in their home country. As long as the law is followed both in the Philippines and their home country, the last will and testament can be applied in the Philippines. Naturally, there will be some restrictions. For example, if there is no will present and you have a Filipina partner and she dies, you could inherit land in the Philippines, but it wouldn't be possible to then pass this on to another foreigner upon your death. If you do wish to make your last will and testament in the Philippines, it is possible, but there are several requirements, so you may find that getting this set up in your home country is much easier. Income, earnings at investment in the Philippines. If you wish to make money in the Philippines as an expat, it is certainly possible, but there are some problems that you may run into. Across Asia, the skill of English can serve you very well when job seeking. However, this is not the case in the Philippines. Expats instead will need to possess certain skills that are highly demanded and not common in local workers. On top of this, local wages are low and it's often more difficult for business 
bonuses to hire foreign workers compared to local workers. So how can you earn money in the Philippines? Well, there's two common ways, through business and investment. It is possible for foreigners to start a business in the Philippines and even own 100% of that business. If you, as a business owner, earns money from overseas, such as the popular outsourcing call center, the business is fairly straightforward to set up. You can also start a local business, which of course earns its money locally, but in order to own 100% of the business, you will need capital of at least $250,000. Looking at the bigger picture, it's often much easier, more profitable, and less risky to start an online business in the Philippines and earn your money from overseas. The Philippines can be funny at times with certain types of investments. Some investments are seen as gambling. I remember last year I was in the process of setting up a commodities trading business in the Philippines, but only to later realize that commodity was technically illegal and not permitted. So here is a list of common investment options for foreign investors that are available. There are certain loopholes that let foreigners invest in more and make money in the Philippines. For example, expats cannot own houses in the Philippines, but if the expat has a business in the Philippines, then they could legally put this house in the name of the business. You will find that there are a lot of successful and profitable businesses that are operating in the Philippines that make a good portion of their profits from outside of the country. Retirement planning in the Philippines. So in general, retirement planning really starts years before you retire, but for the purpose of this video, we shall focus on if you are or soon will be retired. The biggest part of retirement in the Philippines is ensuring that you have enough money now and for the foreseeable future. Expats can retire in the Philippines with only a small amount of capital, but if this is the case, monthly income must also be present. Otherwise, to live long term in the Philippines, you will need a sizable amount of money. This will depend on your age, your lifestyle, and whether or not you have any sources of income. Having $200,000 to $300,000 worth of capital that's earning you interest is a good amount if you are retired currently. There's also the other side to your your retirement plan, which includes your retirement visa, your taxes, and also medical care, all of which cost money. One of the final stages to retirement planning in the Philippines includes your location and lifestyle. This is often during the stabilization stage, and you will have everything in place, and it's now time to enjoy your retirement. Expat insurances in the Philippines. So to get straight to the point, insurance can be obtained locally, and it's often a good idea for most foreigners. The Philippines offers plenty of insurance services, from condo insurance to health to family cover. Each company will have different rules in terms of foreign customers, but most allow foreigners to obtain a local policy. During other videos, we found out that local insurance is often much cheaper on average, but offers less services. But what about if you are on a tight budget? One popular option is Feel Health. This is a public health insurance system which is funded by the government and costs much less than private insurance. On the downside, it does offer much less services and treatments. The cost for Feel Health is only a few thousand pesos a year depending on the type of membership that you apply for. The quote for private local insurance came out to be just over 10,000 pesos and private international insurance came out to be just over 19,000 pesos. Financial scams in the Philippines. There are plenty of financial scams that are common in the Philippines, but scams that affect foreigners tend to be more direct. For instance, you will find a lot of single Filipinos on dating sites and Facebook groups. Many are legitimate, but many are not. We know pyramid schemes are common globally, but they are very, very, very common across the Philippines. In addition, there are also many scams that expats run into, and this includes poker scams, fake letter scams, email scams and taxi scams. If you find that you have a small voice in your head telling you something, something's not right here, I don't know, but something's just not right, it's always a good idea to take a step back and think about this situation logically. Common questions. How can I budget in the Philippines so that I can live here long term? It's often best to overestimate. Decide on the lifestyle that you want to live. Similar to back home, living below your means and budgeting is the best way forward. 
The biggest problem I've seen is that many expats find so many things cheaper so they loosen up the grip on the budget and unfortunately they get into a pattern of spending more. Can I become rich in the Philippines? It's not impossible but it's not as easy as it seems. Expats also have limitations which makes investing and business more difficult. So it's not impossible but it's not the best option if you're looking to get rich. Are there any businesses not open to expats? Yes, the law states that some businesses are not prohibited to be owned by foreigners. The list is known as the negative list, which includes mass media, certain types of mining and also manufacturing weapons. As long as your idea is not on the list, you're good to go. Can an expat really live on $600 a month in the Philippines? Expats have, do and will live on a low budget such as $600 a month, but it's not easy. Expats will need to budget in all areas and either live in a small accommodation outside of the main city or in the provinces. The average Filipino wage can sometimes be only a few hundred dollars so it is possible. However, the quality of life will be a lot different compared to if your budget is $1,200 a month. Can expats get a loan in the Philippines? Yes, expats can get a loan in the Philippines. It's often much easier to get a loan in the Philippines if you are married or have a resident residency visa. You won't find a lot of information about this online but some providers will charge expats a higher amount of interest as expats are deemed as a higher risk. The Philippines is amazing but anything can happen so it's always a good idea to plan for the future or have a plan B. Asia has a lot of options for living, for investing and even for earning money. You could have a base in the Philippines but also in Thailand or Cambodia. Remember that the only limits that you have are the ones that you place upon yourself.